Hey! This time we look into creating the virtual currency in your game using a great PlayFab online service. That includes currencies like gold, gems and even energy. Let's start! We will start in the PlayFab dashboard to configure our currencies. First, go to the economy option in the sidebar and then here at the top select currency. Currently, we don't have any virtual currencies, so let's click this blue button to create a new one. First, let's name it. In my case, that will be just coins. Here in the currency code, you need to specify two characters that will represent your currency. In my case, that would be CN as a shortcut for coin. The last field we'll look for now will be the initial deposit. As the name suggests, please enter the amount of coins that should be granted to any new player at start. In my case, that will be 100. I'll discuss those two fields later on. Press Save Currency and before going to Unity to show you how to implement it, I will create one more currency called Rubies, shortcut RB, with the initial deposit of zero. Okay, time to move on to Unity. Here you can see a simple test project with a UI that features coins and rubies counter, a button to start a game, and a simple store interface to buy something using rubies or coins. Our first goal will be to get the current currency values from PlayFab and display it here on top. Let's open PlayFab Manager script and implement just that. As you can see, here we have some basic methods to log in from the first episode, and here, in the update virtual currencies method, as the name suggests, we'd like to get current coins and rubies. Let's start typing our API request. PlayFab client API dot get user inventory. As you can see, PlayFab does not supply you with something like get user virtual currencies, but rather returns both inventory items and currencies at once in this method. Then we need to specify three other arguments. First, request details, type new get user inventory requests. Then what happens on success, so on get user inventory success, method you can see below, and as always, on error, which looks like this. Now let's focus on the second method. Here we like to take the result and use it to display text on the scene. Firstly, let's type int coins equals result dot virtual currency and now in the square brackets type cn which is the shortcut we defined earlier. I'll also use the text object to display it on the scene. Type coins value text dot text equals coins dot to string. As you can see, I defined text variables up here. Finally, let's do the same for rubies. int rubies equals result dot virtual currency rb and ruby value text that text equals rubies that to string. Now to make sure that the coins and rubies will be updated, let's call get virtual currencies method in the on login success right here. Now I go back to Unity and just before pressing play, please make sure that the texts are linked in the inspector. Then start the game and we have 100 coins and zero rubies just as we defined in the PlayFab dashboard. Next, we'll move on to spending our virtual currency, but first, let me tell you about the sponsor. Core is a brand new gaming platform where you can create games completely for free and explore other creations from people around the world. If you're developing your game alone and you don't have the resources to create a high-quality AAA game, Core has you covered. There is a vast library with thousands of free music, sound and art assets that will speed up your level design and allow you to create your own games without writing in a single line of code. Of course, as a more advanced creator, you can also build games from scratch by creating your own game logic in Lua and making your own 3D models. If you're watching this video, you might wonder how to create a great multiplayer experience for your players. Good news? Core can also take care of that for you. There is a built-in multiplayer so you don't have to worry about multiplayer networking and setting up servers. What's more, you can make money with your games through the Core Perks program, which shares 50% of the revenue with creators. 
Already a lot of core creators have been able to find a great financial success with the help of the Perks program. Right now you can join the Game Creator Challenge with a $13,000 prize pool. Core is collaborating with 9 YouTubers to lead a faction of game creators. Join your favorite YouTuber, submit your own game made in Core and win up to $1,000 in prizes. The challenge ends on December 15, so be sure to submit your game in time. Start now by downloading Core for free using the link in the description. Big thanks to Core for sponsoring this video. So now, time to spend our currency. You might have noticed this store section. All items have a script called item to buy, which exposed two values, coins price and item name. That script also contains a method that is triggered when player clicks buy in the UI. Our goal is to call a playfab method from here to deduct virtual currency. Let's do that. Firstly, at the very top, add using playfab and using playfab.clientmodels. Then in the buy item, type var request equals new subtract user virtual currency request, open brackets. Inside, type virtual currency equals CN as a shortcut for coins and amount equals coins price. Then below that, type playfab client API that subtract user virtual currency and pass request on subtract coin success method I've prepared and finally on error. Please note that here in the on subtract coin success you should put some kind of game logic to grant this item to the user. For now I will just type debug.log both item plus item name. Let's test everything out. In Unity, please notice that each item to buy has a different price defined here in the inspector. Now I will press play, click on that buy button and we get an error. That is because we need to trigger one setting in the PlayFab dashboard. Firstly, here at the top, click Settings icon and select Title Settings. Then go to API Features tab and tick box next to the Allow Client to add and subtract virtual currency. Remember to press Save at the very bottom. Now when I go back to Unity and try to buy the same item again, you can see that we can easily do that and there is a console message at the bottom. The only problem is that currency is not updated here at the top. To do that, we need to create a singleton in the PlayFab Manager to give the ability to call getVirtualCurrencies method from any other script, in our case from item to buy. Here in the PlayFab Manager at the very top type public static playfab manager instance and then create an awake method that will set an instance to this. That way, now in the item to buy script, in the on subtract coin success method, we can type playfab manager that instance that get virtual currencies. That way, now if I run the game once more, you can see that after purchasing one item, our virtual currency updates accordingly. Remember that you can get source files for all my Unity tutorials by supporting me on Patreon, link in the description. Adding virtual currency is also very easy. To quickly add currency to your test account, go to PlayFab dashboard, find your player, then go to the virtual currency, click on the currency you'd like to change and finally type in a desired amount to add. Remember to save your changes. If you'd like to add currency using script, you can also easily do that by copying this method you can currently see on the screen. Now let's move on to the last part of the puzzle, energy. Our goal is to create energy that will be used to start a game. If the player does not have enough of it, the game won't be able to start. Let's go back to the currency tab in the economy section and create a new currency. I will call it energy, code EN and set the initial deposit to 30. Then let's move on to those two fields that we skipped before. The first one, recharge rate, means how much energy should be regenerated per day. So for example, if you like to regenerate one energy point every five minutes, do this calculation. 1440, which is the amount of minutes in a day, 
divided by 5. That equals 288 units per day. Let's enter that. Finally, recharge maximum defines to what point energy will be recharging. In this case, the player starts with 30 energy, each 5 minutes we get one more unit, up to 50. Great, let's save this new currency and let's do some changes in the script. In PlayFab Manager, in onGetUserInventorySuccess, we need to get the new energy currency. Type int energy equals result dot virtual currency en. Then let's create a new text variable at the top, public text energy value text, and then assign energy value to it. Energy value text dot text equals energy dot to string. Now when I go back to Unity and assign a new energy text, you can see that we get the correct amount of energy displayed on the top. But as you may have seen it in many other games, we should also have a counter showing the player how many seconds are left till the next energy reload. Let's prepare that in code. First, I will create a new variable here on the top. Float seconds left to refresh energy equals one. We can also create a fourth text variable called energy recharge time text. Then here in the on get user inventory success, I'll type seconds left to refresh energy equals result dot virtual currency recharge times en dot seconds to recharge. That way we get from PlayPub how many seconds are left. Then finally, let's create a new update method. Inside of it, we'll deduct time from this variable to create a timer. Type seconds left to refresh energy minus equals time dot delta time. You can learn more about timers in this video. Then it's time to display it properly. Type time span time equals time span dot from seconds, seconds left to refresh energy. And then energy recharge time text dot text equals time dot to string and in parentheses pass in such string that will be replaced later in the game with the proper numbers. Finally, if the time will run out, we'd like to refresh energy. So type if seconds left to refresh energy are lower than zero, open brackets, get virtual currencies. Okay, I think we can test it out. In Unity, make sure to assign the correct text in the inspector and run the game. As you can see, we have a fully working timer and then when time runs out, you can see that the energy value is automatically updated. If you'd like to make the start game button work, you can simply use the same script we've created for decreasing coins in the store, if we look more or less like this. If you'd like to be even more fancy, you can also move all of those variables like coins, rubies and energy to the very top of the script. That way you can create some fancy checks like here in the start game method. If energy is lower than 5, then open bracket, debug.log, you don't have energy. That will create a much better experience for the players. And that's it! If you'd like to continue your Unity adventure, be sure to check out my other tutorials shown on the screen. As always, thanks a lot to my awesome patrons that support this channel. Don't forget to check out Core, which is completely free. Use the links in the description to get started and to learn more about Game Creator Challenge. See you soon!